And it's a real continuation of what we learned yesterday. So there'll be a, on Wednesday, sorry, there'll be a bit of recall, but then it takes it a little step further. And there's also this element of we've been working on this a fair bit before with quadratics. All this translation stuff, A, B, C, D, you've seen that before in exercise 3F, and you're working on that at the moment in your assignment. Okay, your horizontal dilations, your vertical dilations, uh, other way around, vertic uh, horizontal dilations, vertical dilations, tra horizontal translation and vertical translation. So this is what we sort of covered last lesson, okay, that this is the basic sine function. It has an amplitude of one, okay? That number out front is one lot of sine, and then we've got a, the number one in front of x, so our value of a and our value of b um, is both one. C, there's no horizontal translation, it's starting where it would normally begin, and there's no vertical translation either, it's not being shifted up or down, so both C and B are zero. And so for the general sine function, it has a wavelength of 2 pi and an amplitude of 1. We've said the amplitude is the distance from the principal axis to a peak or trough. Uh, the wavelength is 2 pi, that's the distance for one whole wave. And so they're the properties it has. Now using that, we're going to do some graphs of these ones. We've got sine of x plus 3. Okay. And so the best way to think about that is you take every value of sine of x and you plus 3. Okay. So straight away, this, this value here, this is 0. Okay. So if we're adding 3 to it, that point is now going to go all the way up to 3. Alright, so here's my x-axis, here's 3. That's where it's going to start. Okay. This point here has a y value of 1, okay? And now we're adding 3 to every y value, aren't we? So that value is going up 3. If we start at 1 and we go up 3, we're now at 4. So the peak is 4. And the minimum, okay, is at minus 1. And again, we're at minus 1. We go up 3, we're going to be at 2. So that can be here somewhere. There we go. And then we'll sketch it in. And so this is the value of D. D is the horizontal translation. Like if we're to describe A is 1, B is 1. Okay, the amplitude is 1. The coefficient of X is 1, which means we have 1 wavelength in 2 pi. So let's sketch that in. That's going to be 2 pi. The first point of intersection with pi. Uh, the, the peak there is going to occur at pi on 2. This is 3 lots of pi on 2, so there's no horizontal translation. The amplitude is the same. The amplitude is the distance from the principal axis to a peak. Okay, so from there to there, that's one unit. And from the principal axis to a trough, that's also one unit. And we've just shifted the whole thing up three units. Now the principal axis, the way to think about that, what is it? It's the line about which the curve uh, promulgates itself, which, which it continues on in that direction. Okay, it's the line from which we measure the moment. <coughs> Uh, it's an invisible line, but it is the vertical translation. Okay, so that, that, that's all good there. Um, so we had A is 1, B is 1, C is 0, and D is 3. And so where to describe this in words? What's the effect? The whole graph has moved up 3 units. It's vertically translated 3 units. Okay, if we have sine of x take 1, okay, so here we've got this in brackets. In brackets, that's C. And C affects the horizontal translation. If we have plus C, it's moving it to the left, C units. And if we have minus C, it's moving it to the right, C units. So here, let's, let's list it again. We've got A is 1, B is 1, and we've got C is this minus 1. Okay, which means it's being shifted to the right, 1 unit. Okay, we're shifting it to the right, 1 unit. So, the way we're going to sketch that, okay, is it's not, it's not being shifted up or down, so our principal axis is still the x-axis. It still has an amplitude of 1 and minus 1. But now, rather than starting here at 0, the starting point has shifted 1 unit over. So it's going to be starting here at 1. Okay? And then it's just going to be the normal curve, up and down. And then we should put some coordinates in for these points, okay? This, on the normal sine curve, this is pi. Alright, so on the normal sine curve, this is pi. So on this one, it's going to be 
one plus pi, okay? Because every unit has been shifted along an extra one. Okay, so zero is gonna be zero plus one. Here, pi plus one. Here, it's gonna be two pi plus one. So that's gonna be the coordinates of that point. And I think that's satisfactory for drawing it, okay? With horizontal translation, you'll never be asked to do it manually. You'll always have your calculator to help you. And so you'll always be able to see what effect, what's going on here, you know, if you're required to sketch it over this part of the region as well. Okay, so you can just insert there from your calculator, whatever it's supposed to be. Okay, so sort of just shoving it sideways and up. <coughs> So let's, um, let's come over here and we're doing the reverse and this is going to perhaps we're bringing the most connections for us is where we're starting with a graph and we need to identify the function that makes it up. And this is something that we can't use our calculator for uh, and this is something where you won't be asked horizontal translation for, okay, unless it's very clear. So here we're probably only finding A, B and D values, okay. So. First, um, that's what we want to identify is the values of A, B, and D. Now, I think it's always easiest to identify the vertical translation first. How much has it been shifted up or down? Okay, so we need to find these values A, B, C, and D. And normally the function starts here, doesn't it? Okay, but we can see with this one, it's starting here. So our principal axis is 1. That's the line about which the function propagates itself. Then we can find both the amplitude and the period. So if we look at the amplitude, the amplitude is the distance from the principal axis to a peak or from the principal axis to a trough. So the principal axis is 1 and it goes all the way up to 3 that distance is two units. Our, our value of A is two, our amplitude is two. Okay. And then we've said for B, the value of B tells you how many wavelengths there are in two pi. Okay, two pi is here. We can see we have one whole peak and one whole trough in two pi. We have one wavelength in two pi. The value of B is 1. Okay, 1 wavelength in 2 pi. And C, we've got no horizontal translation. C is 0. So let's put all of that information into our general sine function. We're going to have this curve is y equals 2 sine um, of x plus 1. Okay? So the value of B is 1, so we don't need to, uh, it's unnecessary to put the, put the number 1 there. We've got 1 lot of X, and the vertical translation has been shifted up 1. Okay. Let's have a look at B. In B, let's identify all of those values again, A, B, C, and D. Okay, so first, like I've said, let's try and find the principal axes, or where does it begin? Now, normally the base sine function begins at zero. This one is starting at minus five. And so our value of D is minus five. And so this is our principal axis, and we can see that. That's the line about which, um, about which both the peak and the troughs uh, continue. So, what? Then we ask, what's the amplitude? Okay, what's the distance from the principal axis to a peak or the principal axis to a trough? Now, I haven't put a scale on here, but you can see it goes from minus five to zero. It's touching the x-axis, and so that length there is five units. Our amplitude is five. And then B. How many wavelengths are there in 2 pi? Well, we've got one wavelength in pi, and we've got two wavelengths in 2 pi. So the value of B is 2. Okay, let's state the equation of this function. It's going to be y equals 5 sine 2x, take 5. Okay, a is 5. 
B is 2 and D is minus 5. Okay, last one. Leap straight in. You want to find A, B, C, and D. Starts at 2, so that's going to be our principal axes or our vertical translation, positive 2. And then it goes from 2, it goes up to 5. So if we're starting at 2 and going up to 5, the distance we've travelled is 3 units. So we have an amplitude 3. And then we need to find B. Okay, so I'm, we're, we're going to, this one's the most challenging one here, to find the value of B. Because we don't have 2 pi, we've got 6. Now 2 pi is 6.28 and a number of decimals. So it's reasonably close to 2 pi, but not quite. So instead what we're going to do is we're going to remember this, that the wavelength is equal to 2 pi divided by B. Okay? 2 pi divided by b is equal to the wavelength. And we can really clearly see from this diagram, the wavelength, one whole peak, one whole trough, is 6 units. So 2 pi divided by b equals 6. Alright. And then what we're doing, we can just swap the B and the 6. Well, effectively what we're doing, we're multiplying both sides by B, dividing both sides by 6. This is going to give us 2 pi on 6 equals B. Um, it's one wavelength on 4, not 6. Oh, I misread that. Thank you. 4. So we'll change that number to 4. 4. Okay, 2 pi on 4. And in simplest terms, that's going to be pi on 2. Yeah. Alright, 2 at the top and 2 times 2 at the bottom. So B is pi on 2. So then, uh, and we've got no horizontal translation. C is real. So then, the equation of this function is going to be uh, 3 sine B is pi on 2 times x. And then the vertical translation is 2. Okay, amplitude, the value of B, you just express it as a number, and then the vertical translation, D. So, one of the questions says, describe the transformation. Okay, so when we're talking about transformation, right, we're talking about going from the base sine function to a function like this. Okay, so let's, let's describe that in words. If we're going from here to here, the first thing that's happened is we've moved the whole function up one unit, and then we have an amplitude of two. Over here we've got an amplitude of one, which means it's given it a vertical dilation, vertical dilation by a factor two. Okay, that's the language you're gonna be sort of um, seeing in the answers, so just introduce you to that. Over here, it's been shoved down five units. Okay, the whole function moved down five units. We've stretched it. Okay, again, a vertical dilation by a scale factor 5, so that it has an amplitude of 5. And then we have a horizontal dilation, don't we? Now, rather than um, having one wavelength in 2 pi, we've squished it so that there's two wavelengths in 2 pi. And so that's going to be a horizontal dilation. Uh, C, we've moved it up 2 units, we've vertically dilated at 3 units, and then we've Normally it's at 6.28 and we've shrunk it to 6. So a very slight uh, horizontal dilation by scale back to pi on 2. So that'll be the language that they use in some of those questions. So this is enough to do both 7b2 and 7b3. Um, well, let's just work on that for the rest of the lesson, see how we go.